So you stumbled on my page, and I'm going to assume that everyone here is as big of a fan of medieval games as I am. Basically, if the game has swords in it, whether it's fantasy, whether it's realistic, I probably played it. The whole King Arthur thing, I grew up on it. So if it has swords, it has knights, it has armors, I tried it out, and I definitely have some preferences on games here, and we don't always get medieval games, right? We all wish we were like Call of Duty popular where we got games every year, every few months, but we don't. So there are a lot of classics on my list. I'm going to give you guys my top five medieval games that you guys have to play. I tried to keep it a little bit more realistic in this uh, in this list, but you know, we're not going for full on realism here. So, so if you like the video, subscribe, and I'm going to give you guys five games that you need to have in your library. Now, if you grew up on movies like Braveheart or Excalibur, you probably dreamed and had fantasies of being in these massive medieval battles and when the mountain blade franchise released you finally got that chance i'm someone who bought the original mountain blade game on their actual tale worlds website when it was made by a husband and a wife the game looked absolutely trash the gameplay was clunky but you got to participate in massive medieval battles and so i i absolutely loved it and the game and the genre has grown over the years and a few years ago we got mountain blade banner lord and if you're a fan of medieval games it's a game that has to be in your library the mountain blade uh mountain blade game is a sandbox you're you're thrown into a world on a massive map that looks something like a, a medieval strategy or game or something it's a it's a huge world and you're just you're just a small part of that world you start off as a mercenary and you can pledge to one of the many factions in the game and go around conquering castles and participating in just massive melee battles or you can choose to start your own kingdom which is a pretty tall tasks but I think the the main part of this game that people are really gonna enjoy most people most people follow my channel at least is when you get off of that campaign map and you get into the actual battles once the game heats up you're talking about 500 on 500 massive melees along with castle sieges so if you've ever wanted experience arrows flying over your head you know melee soldiers on each side slamming each other to the ground horses charging through the lines as you fight just complete chaos this is is the game for you. I absolutely love the Mountain Blade uh, franchise and what's so great about it too is there's so much replayability to it. There is a massive moderation scene to this game so if you want to completely change the base game turn it into something like Game of Thrones or I believe there's a Warcraft mod out there or an Ancient Rome mod you can do that. There is so much replayability to this game. Now, next on my list, we have a medieval strategy game, and we've had a lot of really good medieval strategy games throughout my lifetime. I, I think like the 90s, to early 2000s was kind of kind of the time period for those games. But my favorite is Medieval 2 Total War. And this to me was the pinnacle of the Total War franchise. Maybe I'm biased because I love everything medieval, but this game is so epic. Again, it's a strategy game. So you start on a campaign map. Once again, you take control of a nation. You build up its economy, but it's kind of like light building in, in medieval Total War. As the name, uh, as the name implies, the strategy part kind of takes a little bit of a backseat to the main point of the game which is the massive medieval battles you're talking thousands of the troops that you get to manage on the battlefield all different troop types and surprisingly this is an extremely old game but the graphics they pass the test of time not all old games still look decent on modern PCs this game still looks really good and you're not gonna feel like you're playing a, a original Nintendo game if you get this I think it's something that everyone needs in their library and again just like Mountain Blade it actually has a massive modding scene that's been making mods for the game I'm gonna say for like 20 years uh, I don't remember when it came out but for a long time so again there's infinite replayability to this game it's something if you haven't played because it's old you need to get it into your library because it is that good now next on our list we have a game that I'm gonna be honest and say I wasn't open-minded to play when it released it's called a plague tale innocence and it's about a girl who basically spends the whole game protecting her baby brother and it's not really a combat focused game and I saw that I saw the trailers and I was like there is zero badassness to that i don't want to do it and then it came out on game pass for free and i tried it out and i said oh my god i am an idiot 
and I should have been open-minded because this is one of the best medieval games I have ever played. So A Plague Tale Innocence is more of a stealth and more of a problem-solving game where you're not a, a medieval combatant, but it's taking part in, uh, I want to say in France during a plague, and you're trying to survive an inquisition, they want your sickly brother, and you want to keep your sickly brother safe. So there's a lot of sneaking around, solving puzzles, your main weapon is a sling that throws rocks, so you're not really going to be taking out full-on knights, but you're going to use them to mess with terrain, distract people so you can sneak past them. And the thing with this game is, one, it looks absolutely beautiful. One of the best looking games I've ever played. If you have a Steam Deck, put it on your Steam Deck. It looks really good. Uh, but also, it has a really good story. If you're someone who's a fan of medieval games with a good story, good cutscenes, this is the game for you. One of the best stories I've played. And if you want to really be blown away, the more recent one, A Plague Tale Requiem, looks as one of the best games I've ever seen. Really, really good. So definitely check those games out and be open-minded enough to try it that it's not a combat game. So the fourth game I'm going to talk about, and, and no real order here on which game I like the best. They're all great, right? You need them all in your library. Uh, is Stronghold. And the Stronghold game, another one from my childhood that I grew up on, it's all about base building. So your goal in this game is generally that you're going to build a castle and you're going to get attacked by waves of enemies and you want them not to destroy your castle. So there's a little bit of a game here where you're building up defenses in a strategic way, but it's also kind of like a city builder where you're managing resources, right? You have to send out peasants to farm for food. You have to hire blacksmiths to make weapons and then you have to train your soldiers, position them, repair damage to your walls, all while making money, trying not to spend too too much money and keeping your castle and your lord alive the game has that old school feel where the the music like you listen to some of those old games the music just sticks in your head forever and it's also a game that passes the test of time if you look at stronghold or stronghold crusader to this day they still look pretty decent but if you're new to the genre the stronghold definitive edition just released a few months ago and it, it cleans up the graphics pretty significantly so it looks a lot sharper and a lot closer to modern day standard and it's really cheap it's a game that i think if you like medieval games you have to get into your library because what is better than building your own castle and defending it from an attack? And the last game on my big list here that I want to talk about is what I think is the best medieval game of all time. And you guys might argue with that one on me, and that's fine, right? We can all have our opinion, and that's what the comment section is for. But it's Kingdom Come Deliverance, and this is Skyrim in an actual medieval-based historical world. Um, there are so many systems in this game to make a great RPG game. First of all, the story is absolutely amazing. Like I was talking with A Plague Tale, it has epic cutscenes, excellent voice acting, all the quests, they, they don't feel like filler quests, they feel like there's story to them. There is so much you can do in this game. It has light survival elements, you have to clean yourself, you have to feed yourself, you have to make sure you're hydrated, but you don't have to do it so often that it feels tedious, right? You do it a few times a play session real quick and you're back in the game. The world is absolutely massive. Graphically, it looks beautiful. You can still go into this game years after release and be like, damn, this, this game looks better than so many current gen games. And it's one of those games that you can either go play through the main story and complete it in like 30 to 50 hours, or you could just go into the world and complete quests, decide that you want to work on, on some crafting or, uh, or, or potions. You literally can learn to read in this game. Yes, you start off as a complete uneducated weakling who can't fight or can't read. You can learn to read in the game. You can travel to a ton of places, do a ton of quests, and you can spend hundreds of hours in this game now while everything looks amazing in this game i do just want to say as a chivalry content creator mainly i don't like the combat in kingdom come deliverance it was meant to feel or be based on over realistic techniques it looks nice it looks cinematic it plays very clunky the combat's a little bit divisive if you're like me and you're a chivalry person you might not like it that much but there are plenty of great games that i didn't like the combat like uh, like Skyrim or something. I thought the combat is trash, but I love the game. So I think you're going to be able to overlook that. It's a game that you must play, and the sequel is coming this year, so you should get it when it's on one of these Steam sales and, and start putting your time in now. It's absolutely amazing.
So let's have that bonus game talk. I didn't say anything about Chivalry 2 or Mordhau. Both of these games are like the battlefield game of medieval times, like 30 versus 30 in large castle sieges, large battles. It's skill-based medieval melee combat. There are two of these types of games, and they're both really good but which one should you get i think you have to have one of the two in your library so there are some differences between them so chivalry 2 is probably the slightly more arcadey version of this medieval combat um, it has a healthier player base it has a very healthy console player base and it's a little bit easier to get into you can play the tutorial you can go into lobby and you can probably have a good time not knowing that much and just laugh your ass off as you get your head chopped off a bazillion times I, I think the barrier to entry to this game is a little bit easier than Mord House while still having a high skill ceiling where the, the best players can express their skill pretty clearly. Now, Mord How, <laughs> Mord How is also a great game, but Mord How has an extremely finicky and skill based combat system that, after being released for over five years, is very, very difficult to get into. It also has an extremely small player base, and guess what? Most of those people have been playing for five years. Five years so you're, you're, you're really gonna be put to the task if you want to get into Mordhau it's a lot t more difficult to pick up and the fact that no one really knew is coming into the game makes it even worse it's also has virtually no console audience so my my uh, opinion on this is if you pick one get chivalry 2 it's also on game pass so you can try it for free but uh, I, I just think at this point Mordhau with not getting any new development or anything is probably not worth your time as a new player so check out Shiv. Now my two big bonus games that you have to check out, neither of these are completed, but I think they're worth a purchase and add to the Steam library with the understanding that you're going to play these games a bit, right, get 10, get 20 hours in, then you're going to put them on the shelf for a little bit, and you're going to wait for some updates. The first one is Hellish Court, and this is a fencing game. It was made by one person on their bed on with his laptop. <laughs> amazing, amazing point right there, guys, because look how good the game looks, and then look how trash so many like triple-a games looks like how, how how does one person do this with teams of hundred make garbage games uh, that's the question of life right so this is a fencing game and every single style in the game is based on the real uh, sword martial art Hema so every technique is actually used in real world it's all based on study and the fights are made to take out in a realistic way which means if you get hit once you're gonna be in a lot of pain you might be dead if you get hit twice, you're definitely going to be dead because it's more fencing, so there's no real armor. This game, it's a marvel to play, right? And, like, just the, the gore, the epicness of the kills, it can get pretty intense, and it can get kind of addicting when you're going through it. And I, I will say about this game, though, there's not too much to the modes. It's one of those games that you go into, you marvel at the graphics, you marvel at the gameplay, you marvel at the physics between the swords, but there's not too much past the past that right there there is a story mode that's starting to be implemented it's not implemented yet and when one guy is making a game on a laptop progress can be a little slow right so it's a game that i would recommend putting in your library if you want like medieval things you're going to enjoy it and you're going to be i think marveled by the game but it's not going to be the type of game that you're going to put 150 200 hours into at least not yet but it's worth checking out and my last bonus game, I know you guys heard about it. You have to have heard about it because it was, I think, the most wishlisted game on Steam at some point, and that is Manor Lords. And this goes into the same category made mostly by one developer who somehow made something that looks so beautiful and so epic that it got an insane amount of hype. And for the most part, the game lived up to the hype. It's a medieval city builder at, at its forefront, and it does have some elements of Total War real-time strategy battles into it, but it's more of a city builder where you're starting a town from just scratch, you're settling it, you're building houses, you're farming, you're building an economy, you're trading, you're arming your actual villagers so that if you're attacked, you can defend yourselves, and if you want to go conquer more land, you can do that. Now, the game as currently is, and I'd say 40 hours, you can probably accomplish everything that is in the game as, as is. Um, 
the game still has a lot of stuff that needs to be added. It's a game that if all the stuff that's supposed to be added gets into the game, I think it's going to go down as one of, if not the best, real-time strategy games in the medieval genre that has ever released. I think that highly of it. That being said, again, in small development teams, which means these big updates that really change the gameplay, they're probably going to come slow. So again, I feel like it's a game that you do a playthrough, you learn what you're doing, you give it that 20, that 30 hours, and then you shelf it for a few months until there's a big update and you come back. Now, if the game's looking a little expensive for an early access or an early version of game, it is on Game Pass on both Xbox and PC, so you can try it out for free if you have one of those. All right, gentlemen, that's it for me, and I do want to hear from you guys. This was a completely unscripted video. I just winged it. Do you guys like when I just kind of, I just kind of talk? Uh, you know, I have no real plan. I'm just going in there wanting to, you know, release my mind onto you guys and what I think. Let me know down below. All right, champ out.